Amen, amen. God bless you, family. God, welcome back to the Morning Devos. Your brother, DJ Sam Rock, and we are here. Amen. And today, I woke up with an alertness in my heart, a warning that to stay alert from the Lord. Amen. I was like, what's going on? Um, and I woke up early due to a phone call from um, my medical service partners, and they needed some meds picked up and delivered. Early in the morning, and I'm not a morning person. If you follow me, you know that I'm not a morning person. But it was hours before I usually wake up. And I just said yes. I don't know if it was because I was half asleep or half awake. I just told the people yes. And then when I woke up, after I said the yes, I was like, wait. See? Because I wasn't alert. I said yes, and I obligated myself to something that could have interfered with my morning Devo. But praise God. He made the time. He made the way. And I'm here on time. Usually I would have been late if I would have said yes. Um, if I wasn't aware of the time, I would have just said yes. But I wasn't aware of the time this morning, so I wasn't alert. So, But God gave me the grace. But there's still a warning in my heart and in my soul uh, for you and for me, for us to stay alert. <laughs> and the warning is that if we are not alert, if we're not uh, sober-minded, um, then we could fall prey to some things. Um, that are not good. It's not um, as sweet as candy anymore. And life will get more difficult than what it already is. If it's not as hard already. Amen. But stay alert on the Morning Devo. And the question I ask is. What will you be alert to today? What will you be alert to today? And do you have self-control? Because self-control is a big part of being sober-minded. Having self-discipline, having self-control. The Bible is clear. The Bible says without the Spirit of God living within us, we have no self-control. So join a family of people who are not filled with Holy Spirit, right? They could tell you that it's hard for them to control themselves. It's hard for believers sometimes if we're not sober-minded, if we're not alert to have self-control as well or self-discipline. I'm struggling and I'm battling um, the gut. Again, um, if you follow me, you know that I'm a health and wellness um, person and I'm also, uh, you know, in nutrition. But it seems like I go off track in these areas where I'm like, why am I eating this? Why am I eating that? And I need to stay away from this and I need to stay away from that. And I get my mind starts getting foggy and I pay for it and it shows up in my body, on my body. So not all things that we are aware of not all things that we're aware of that we are alert to. So the question still stands, what will you be alert to today? Do you have self-control? We're going to be coming out of first Peter chapter number five, verses eight and nine. But if you read the, the chapter five of first Peter, you realize a lot is going on there. A lot of power, a lot of warnings, a lot of victory, a lot of um, alertness. Um, I know our culture calls it being woke. But the scripture says to be alert, to be sober minded, to be self-controlled, to be willing to be inspired and filled by Holy Spirit God to guide us. Amen. And it's part of your spiritual growth. It's part of my spiritual growth. Amen. We could grow in this. So stay alert on the Morning Devo. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, don't hesitate to leave them on the live stream. Also, if you're listening on a podcast, there should be a way to connect with me um, from whatever platform you're listening to the podcast from, the audio only version. So I'm just grateful to be here in front of you, on the mic, behind the mic, however you want to call it. I'm just excited to be here. Um, and listen, the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. Amen. So when I come on, DJ Sam Rock, a.k.a. Brother Sam Lopez, Brother Sam, amen. I'm only coming on because of the power of Holy Spirit. And I love because God first loved me. And I love what I do because I know that the love of God can transform any life, no matter what you did yesterday or no matter what you're planning on doing in the future that can bring harm to someone, to yourself. Listen, God is a God who forgives. God is a God who redeems. God is a God who saves. God is a God who has mercy. God is a God who has grace. God is a God who is love. Amen. And he wants us to be alert. He wants us to stay alert. Stay alert on the morning diva. I wish I had a, 
a sound effect, you know, some kind of alarm and siren. Amen. And it would have woke us up even a little bit more if you're um, not a morning person like me, right? So stay alert on the morning Devo. First Peter chapter five, verses eight and nine. Get your Bible apps ready. Get your um, Bibles. If you have the paper a version of a Bible, get it ready because we're going to be there. We're going to take it there. So let's pray. Again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, all through, anytime, whether this is live or not, by the time you come through and watch or listen, amen, don't hesitate, leave it on the live, or if you don't want things to be seen publicly, you could always inbox me on any of the social media platforms that you're watching from or listening from on the podcast, right? And also, if you don't want to be on social media like that, and you know people who are not on social media like that, I'm streaming from all different platforms, including live. That's so winners with a Z. That org. That's live. That's so winners with a Z. That org. That website right there. Um, I take pride in it. It's a distraction-free, drama-free website. Amen. It has a live chat, a live Bible. It has the notes um, that you could take notes on your own, or you could see the notes when I'm live. Uh, on the replays as well so it's a good time to go over there as well all you got to do is sign up it takes less than 40 seconds and it's a one and done deal amen so let's pray and after we pray we can share this out for 60 seconds and after the 60 seconds is over amen we're going to dive into first peter chapter 5 verses 8 and 9 father god thank you for the time that you've given us lord god for the time that you have graced us with for every single time that you have woken us up and giving us the ability to say no to the things that are trying to harm us, and yes to the things that are trying to help us. So, Father, we thank you for your warnings. We thank you for the strategies uh, that you give us to help steer clear of the evil traps of the evil one. Help us to be sensitive to your spirit, Lord God. Help us to be sensitive to your spirit today and in every day moving forward. And I pray, Lord God, that you will help us grow the fruit of self-control in our lives, that we will be self-controlled, self-disciplined. And whatever distractions come our way, Lord God, help us to be honoring to you and to honor your name no matter what is thrown our way. So I pray a hedge of protection over all my sisters and brothers in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Lord God, for my family and my whole bloodline that you will restore, redeem, save, sanctify, renew, and save my whole bloodline from the very youngest family member to the very oldest and everyone in between. And I also share that faithful prayer to every single person who's connecting, every single person who's watching, every single person who's listening that's representing their families as well as they stand in the gap in prayer for their family and loved ones as well. So I speak life concerning all things living. I come uh, with the power of Holy Spirit God speaking life into every single person who is willing to listen to what you're saying, who's willing to listen to what you're what you're speaking in your word and to apply that word in their lives to move forward in victory, knowing that we have the victory through Christ Jesus, the son of the almighty living God, who is God, who came in the flesh on our behalf. In Jesus holy name, I pray this by faith. Amen and amen. 60 seconds. When we come back, we'll be in first Peter chapter five, verses eight and nine. I'll be right back. Amen. Let's go for it. That 60 seconds is too fast for me, um, but it's a good 60 seconds. First Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. The Bible says, stay alert, and it has an exclamation point. 
So shouting at us to stay alert, wake up, get out of your slumber, get out of your stupor, I call it, and get out of your trance. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So all this about the devil has no power. The devil, you know, is defeated. Yes, he is defeated. But yes, he has power. It's people saying he has no power. He has power, suggestion. He's been in heaven. He knows how um, that all works in the heavenly realms. He knows the word, yet he refuses himself to apply it because there's no truth in him. And he, according to the scripture, he prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So even though he's acting like something he isn't, he's actually doing what he can do to devour those who are asleep, who are not alert. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. So if we have to be strong in our faith, that means his attacks are worth us staying alert and worth us being strong in our faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering that you are and that I am. So it's not like we're surprised, man, we're going through this, we're going through that, as if we're the only ones. One of the tactics of the enemy is that he makes you, he tries to convince you and tries to make you feel like you're the only one that is going through any hard time. He tries to isolate us to make us feel that no one is able to help us and that no one cares about us. That's one of the tactics of the enemy. But if you're alert to what God is doing and you're sober-minded, if you have the spirit of self-control, the fruit of self-control, which is the fruit of the spirit, one of the fruits of the spirit, amen, he can't do that to you. He, won't, he, no, he will no longer have control over what you're thinking. Amen. He can't read your mind. Amen. Sister Joanne, God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. It's good to see you. God bless you. Good morning to you as well. It's good to see you. God bless you and your family. So what will you be alert to today? Let's go to 1 Peter 5 and 8 and read it out of the Amplified Version. Because I saw something earlier out of the Amplified Version that speaks loud and clear to me and to my soul and to my spirit. And hopefully it will speak clear to you as well. The same scriptures, amen, but the Amplified takes a little spin uh, on the words. And not that they spin it, but I, I believe they add some more depth into what um, is being read. It says, be sober, right? Well-balanced and self-disciplined. You notice that when you see a drunk person that's on alcohol or drugs or high in drugs, drunk on alcohol, that they're out of control. I've never seen a drunk person that was in control. I've always seen drunk people that are out of control. They're a little extra in doing this. They're a little extra in doing that. They're a little loose in doing this, a little loose in doing that. They're not practicing self-discipline. And I know a lot of people are really having into, you know, the alcoholics. And I'm not downplaying. I'm not pointing fingers. And I'm not saying it's tough to get out of that addiction or those addictive ways. But what I am saying is that the scripture has a remedy a remedy for that. It's called being sober, well-balanced, and self-disciplined. We cannot do it without God and His Spirit living inside of us. Be alert and cautious. Sometimes, no, the Bible says be alert and cautious at all times. <laughs> Whether you're you know, in a party lifestyle or not. Whether you're contemplating this or not. Be alert. Alert and cautious at all times. That means to stay sober-minded, conscience. Watch and pray. Amen? Be sensitive to the Word of God, to the Holy Spirit, who's speaking and guiding you and me into all truth. That enemy of yours, that enemy of yours, that enemy of mine, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry. He's a defeated foe, right? And he's, a, he's full of hatred. And people really think that the devil is only after Christians, only after God's people. No, he's after all creation. He hates all of God's creation. So the weird thing about it is that people who worship the devil think that they're safe, that they're in allegiance with him. They're actually not in allegiance. He has no friends. 
He's not in the business of making friends. He hates even his own worshipers. He hates even his own um, demons because he knows ultimately, right, in the beginning, those demons were angels created by God. So he hates even his own people, his own army. There's no love of him. There's no truth of him. So don't think that he's just after us. He's after everyone, everyone you know, everyone who believes, every atheist, every agnostic, every skeptic, every cynic, every religious person. He's after all of us. He has no friends. Get that through to you, through your mind. It's not only, he's not only our foe as believers. He's your foe too, even if you're not a believer. Wake up, stay alert. Blessings to you, my sister Joyce. God bless you. And welcome to the Morning Devo. He's fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour, but resist him. And the Bible is clear. The Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil. And what would the devil do? He will run. He will flee from you and from me, but resist him. Be firm in your faith against his attack, rooted, established, immovable. So your faith needs to be rooted, established, and immovable. No doctrine, no wave or ideas, no um, style, no culture, no sayings, no witchcraft, no curse can get you uprooted when you're established and immovable and your faith is strong because those are attacks of the enemy. Knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being experienced by your brothers and your sisters throughout the world. You do not suffer alone. And people were like, people right now, I hear people saying, suffer? I don't want to suffer. Neither do I. But there's going to be pain and suffering on this side of eternity because this is a broken world, right? A fallen world. And it wasn't God's fault. It wasn't his intention for us to go through what we're going through. It wasn't God's intention for us to have um, death in our life. It wasn't God's intention for us to deal with what we're dealing with. But he redeemed all of it. And he has a plan to come back and redeem and restore his original plan back on this earth. You don't believe it, you could read the book of Daniel, you could be read the book of Revelation, and you could read the first um, two chapters of Genesis. So, and through all out the scriptures you see that the line of redemption all throughout the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. So what's happening here? Well, it seems like there's a, a big warning flashing in our face when the scripture says, he, the devil, is your great enemy. So stay alert, watch out. He's coming in one way or another. People really think he's going to come looking scary. No, the devil really doesn't come looking scary. He's smarter than that. He studied mankind long enough to know that if he comes scary we're gonna run so he'll come in the form of a good-looking man of a good-looking woman in the form of food in the form of drugs in the form of alcohol in the form of pleasure in the form of pornography in the form of um um what are those called those romantic novels wherever he can get in he will get in he studies us he knows the sinful nature of man. He knows what it takes to get our attention. He knows what it takes to get us um, to disagree with the scripture. He knows what it takes to get us self-centered. He knows all of that. He's a great enemy. Well, we have a greater God. Amen. We have a greater God that overcome our great enemy, that overcame our great, that defeated this great enemy. But, We're still here fighting. The war is already won, but if we don't fight the battles that face us, um, then we're surrendering to the devil. No, we're surrendering to the Lord. Amen. And when we surrender to the Lord, we have victory over all of this. So what will you be alert to today? God will give us warnings. He gives us warning through pain in our bodies. When we have pain in our body somewhere, that's a warning sign that God already had programmed in our body to let us know something's going on. If you have heart pain, there's something going on in your heart. If you have a headache, we might have to, you know, check our, you know, our neural system, you know, uh, our nervous system, 
or you know, if we have eye pain, we might have to check our eyes. If we have ear aches, we might have to check our ears. And further and going along, knee pain, check your knee, right? We have these warnings already in our DNA programmed in us. How much more do we have these warnings from the Word of God and through the spiritual realm? If God sends us warning naturally in our bodies, He will send us warning supernatural in the supernatural realm. Amen. Um, just last night, a brother in Christ was sharing that while he was with his family um, and just you know having a good time, he was alerted to something upstairs that was going on that was not right. So he told his wife, "There's something not right upstairs." And he went upstairs and did some rebuking and praying. Amen. Because he knows it's a spiritual war. And he knows he has to be alert. He knows he had the warning from the Holy Spirit. And he knows to take heed to be, uh, you know, to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit when he warns us. So we're to be alert, sober minded. Like again, I said, I'll say it again. I've never seen a drunk person in control. I've never seen a high person in control of their self-discipline or self-control by those things. Realize one thing, because people, um, you know, like to kind of like skim the surface and skim the line and goes go so close to the line of sin. They say, oh, I could drink as long as I don't get drunk. Listen, when you drink, and this goes out to my Christian brothers and sisters, I call them sipping saints, Christians with cocktails. Amen. That's between you and the Lord. But let me tell you something. My personality might be different than yours. If I'm going to drink alcohol or wine or anything like that, I'm not going to stop at a point of not being drunk or not being intoxicated or not getting that feeling or not getting, uh, what's that feeling that you're close to drunk? Uh, What's the word? Uh, Feeling nice, right? A buzz. If I need a buzz from wine, then I'm really telling myself, this is how I see it, that I'm not self-controlled enough to just drink soda, water, or juice. If you're thirsty, there's other things to drink. But if you're one of those people, you're one of my brothers and sisters that say, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that is okay. Well, at what point is it okay? And what po- at what point do you stop? Once you're buzzed, according to the law, or at least in Pennsylvania, if you drive buzzed, you are driving over the alcoholic limit, Right? So once you get that buzz, your body starts to function differently and you're no longer sober minded, but you're now in the on the edge of being not sober, but being a little bit, you know, buzzed or a little bit drunk with the wine or with the alcohol. So instead of taking it to that point and risking that, um, just don't do it. That's a matter of being self-controlled, self-disciplined. It's the fruit of the Spirit. One of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. So I'm okay with that. Amen? And if and if you're not okay with that, that's between you and the Lord. Amen? This is not about being judgmental or anything like that. I could just speak on it because I'm free from it. Amen? Even from the idea. Alcohol doesn't have nothing over me. Um, marijuana, I used to smoke a lot of marijuana, has nothing over me anymore. Uh, what else? There's some other things um, that have really no no hold over me anymore as a matter of fact if we're real tight with the scriptures the bible does say that sin in general has no more control over any person that's born again sin um, separates us from things that god wants us to do separates us from god's presence a lot of time so if sin separates that means the opposite faith in god and self-discipline with God, amen, keeps us connected. So let's stay connected. Let's stay alert. Let's stay sober-minded, amen. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Stand firm against the devil's tactics. The devil's tactics, his concepts, his ideas, his temptations, stay clear, stand clear from that. Temptation comes, God will give us a way out. There's always a way out if you're in Christ. But my warning To my brothers and sisters that are not um, born again. And I say brothers and sisters just because we're of the same kind. Humankind. Mankind. Human beings. If you're not filled with Holy Spirit God. You're actually a slave to whatever comes your way. You can't say no to sin. You're not alert. You're not being sober minded. You're definitely not self-controlled. That's my warning to you. Pick a side. 
We can't be on both sides of the fence at the same time. When I go into my backyard, I look at my fence and I can't see on the other side. I'm pretty sure my neighbor, when they look at the fence, they can't see on the other side. But they're on that side and I'm on this side. I can't be on two sides of the fence. They can't be on two sides of the fence either. We could probably hear things, imagine what's going on on the other side, but we can't be present on both sides. So we have to choose. We have a choice. We could choose daily to serve God or we could choose daily not to serve him. Or you could choose to serve him one day or two or three days in a week or maybe only times that you serve or obey God is when you're at church. Or you could do it, you know, the other way. Don't serve him at all. Unfortunately, people go the other way and they say they don't want no parts of this whole gospel, of this whole scripture, the Bible. They don't want no parts. And I kind of, I, I you know, I regret it that they say that and I'm, I'm praying for them. But I kind of like respect that because they're not trying to um, play hypocrite. They're not trying to play the church game. They're not trying to say that they're part of something that in their heart they know they're not part of. We could pray for those souls um, that God himself will reveal himself to them and they will have a personal encounter with the living, holy, righteous, loving God. Amen? But I have to respect people's decisions. You have to respect people's decisions as well. That's part of being self-controlled and disciplined. That's part of being alert. That's part of God warning us that your great enemy, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Most of the time, you see someone who is not inspired by the Holy Spirit or you see someone who is not filled with the Holy Ghost, right? Who is not saved, who is not born again. Most of the time, you'll notice that they're having an okay life, like according to their standards. And it seems like the devil is not bothering them. But that's a deception. Once the devil knows that he has these people and those people distracted so much that they don't, they could care less about God. He really doesn't mess with them as much because he's they're they're already in prison. They're already in his bondage. They're already in in his grip. So he moves on to the next. You know that the devil is not omnipresent like God. The devil has to prowl. The devil has to be roaring like a lion. He has to try to imitate. But once he has these people captured, he's very strategic. He has those people captured and that land captured. If you notice that if you go through certain parts, and I was on a prayer team years ago, and we said divide the Lehigh Valley where I'm from, where I'm, where I'm living. I'm, I'm from New York, but I'm living here in the Lehigh Valley. It is divide quadrants on the map. And we should go into these quadrants and pray because we knew where um, the most demonic activity was happening. We would go to those places. And pray. I took a, a, he's a pastor now, but he wasn't a pastor before when I did this. And he, he, the first time he experienced this, I said, let's go to where I used to hang out. This is, I was already saved and I was doing um, ministry with a brother of mine. I don't want to mention his name. I don't have permission. Uh, and I took him. He didn't, he doesn't look like us. He doesn't look like me. He's from a different background, but I took him, brought him with me. Right. And, um, we just, Went to the neighborhood where I, where I used to hang out first in Allentown. And we just started praying right then and there. And he was just amazed that, first of all, there was no amens. There was no hallelujahs. But he felt this pressure. He felt like this, this presence of something bad. But when we were praying, he felt like it was cleared up around us. And we were praying, and it was pushing out and out and out and out further into the neighborhood. He felt it in his spirit. I felt it in my spirit. Um, that's because where, where God warns us, and we have the strategies, we have the know-how, we know what to do. And that's because the prayers of the righteous are better than much. But what I'm trying to express is that prayer and territories and all these things go along with being alert. So we could be alert and break bondages through prayer. We could stand in the gap for those who are suffering, for those who do not believe. The enemy is mad. The enemy, like the Amplified says, he is fiercely hungry to see who 
he can kill, who he can steal from, to see who can kill, steal, and destroy. That's his, that's what he does. That's who he is. Stay alert. I don't know what happened. Um, you know, a lot of, you know, of the of the churches are going around rebuking the devil as if they can. They're trying to cast the devil out as if they can. Um, if you look at the scriptures clearly, uh, the only one who defeated to defeat it, um, the devil is Jesus. Or we are to rebuke things of you know evil, and we can cast out demons. Um, but when it comes to the devil, he was defeated by the <laughs> by Jesus Himself. Amen. And I know people get mad. No, you, you know you could cast out the devil. Well, the Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil. Over here, it also says, stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. doesn't say, oh, go and kill the devil. Cast out them demons. But do that, even use wisdom in that. Be strategic about that. There's a situation um, that's been brewing in a community of brothers. And we're contemplating on doing something, but we have to use wisdom. Because if we cast out some demons, um, we have to make sure the person who is clean from them demons knows how to be alert themselves and to fill themselves with Holy Spirit God. So that way, whatever whatever room in their hearts and their lives that has been cleaned out, that there will be no entrance way for the enemy to come back, for the demon to come back. Because if there's an entrance way, they will come back with more people, more demons, more, you know, seven times more than before. You, even in there, you have to be careful. So, I know this was heavy for Morning Devo, but that's where God took me. Amen. And I'm learning to not worry about um, my, my opinion on what God wants me to say. I'm learning to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I'm learning to stay alert. I'm learning to watch out. For your great enemy, for my great enemy, the devil. I'm learning to pray more. I'm learning to fast more. I'm learning to stand firm against the evilness, the evil people, the evil reigns, the, the dark places. I'm learning to be strong in my faith. And man, this is a process. You might be saying, I thought you were already strong in the faith. Well, I, I want to be stronger. How about that? Amen. And you could be stronger too. Remember, that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. So we don't suffer alone. Amen. When one of our brothers and sisters is down, somebody's up to lift them up. Accountability, prayer, worship, praise, you know, um, just fellowship, connection. Stay connected to the body. Stay connected to um, the family of God. Stay connected to the kingdom of God. And you will see that God will make things easier for us. It's not that things are going to go away all the time. It's going to be easier for us to believe and trust and stand firm and keep standing against the attacks of the enemy. Amen. I had a second question, and the second question was, do you have self-control? Now, I'm going to leave that because I'm out of time. That's you know, between you and the Lord. Do you have self-control? Look up self-control in the scriptures and find out what God has to say about self-control. And you'll be amazed, and you'll be alert, and you'll be warned, but you'll have the strategy to get the victory in Jesus name. So God bless you all. God keep you all. And remember always that God is good. Peace.